Hello, hello, and welcome to the second update for Summer Sock Camp 2024. So these little chronicles are just my recordings for posterity and the enjoyment and the fun of my involvement, my participation in the Crazy Sock Ladies Summer Sock Camp. So if you don't know, it's a make-along, super casual. She's run it every year. I think she might be year five, six, something like that. Um, it's evolved over the years, and this year it's like a really um casual let's just make socks all summer so it's a proper celebration of socks which is really exciting so last time i shared my initial progress after one week of summer sock camp it is now the 16th of june so i think we're I've done three weeks now three weeks of summer sock camp um and i shared some of my whips that i was going to hopefully be cracking and getting done as part of this camp so I've come back to share my progress um, so far and I have done so well. I'm so, so happy. I'm really, really enjoying um, the summer sock camp. It's it's such good fun. I have one completely finished object and I have a ton of progress on some other whips as well that I'm just so excited to show you. So here we go. First up, here is my finished pair of head over heels from Stylecraft. I did finish these for me, and to be honest, I finished it fairly quickly after the last recording. I think it took me a few more days um, to get them done, and I am so, so happy with them. Um, they fit beautifully. As you can see, I haven't woven the ends in, but I count those as finished, and I, I tucked the ends away <laughs> when I put them in the finished object for us. They will be done shortly. Um, on Ravelry and I just they're really soft they're really nice to wear I'm really excited to have these in my sock drawer so that's them I haven't bothered trying to match life's too short and you can see they're related they don't have to be identical twins so that's pair number one finished then I've made a ton of progress on my mum's second sock. So there's the first and this is the second. The issue I've got is that that is all the yarn I have left. So I am waiting for my mum to send me back the original first sock that I did for her because um, I knit it and I didn't think it was going to fit. So I posted it up to Essex so that she could try it on and lo and behold, it didn't fit. Um, so I cracked on in the meantime with working on um a new first sock uh which she tried on at my aunt's birthday and it did fit fits really nicely so that's great um and i've done as much as i can of the second sock last time i said to you i couldn't find the spare yarn that i had left over but i have actually found it and i've knit a whole chunk so all of this much has been done since i last saw you but i can't really go any further now i've got maybe two rounds worth of yarn here so those ones are definitely on pause. This yarn is Cozy Cozy, which is hand dyed from Cornwall. I've got no idea if they're still going. I'd never heard of them before. I've not seen them since. And she bought this for me about five years ago. So I don't know, but I will possibly try and find out or you can Google it yourselves if you're interested. I really like it. It's kind of micro striping, pooling. They're quite funky. So that's pair number two. The third pair of socks that I've been making progress on, because as you know, I've got various sock works in progress. So I've had about 15, I think I worked out, between half socks and active whips. Um, and part of my new little rotation I'm doing, I, I'm trying this thing where, where I get stuck with what to do when I've got some crafting time. Instead of just dithering for my entire time and wasting it and not doing it, which is what tends to happen, I've got a tiny decisions app. So if you view my podcast, if you're not here just for Sock Camp, you'll know about this already. Um, and I plug in various projects and things to do, spin the spinner and whatever it lands on, I work on for 20 minutes. And so one of the things I plugged in, having finished my heart and soul socks, were the Vervain socks from 52 Weeks of Socks, volume one. This is pattern 26. As you can see, it's got a really gorgeous leaf pattern on, and I'm using Skein and the Stitch in Amethyst, uh, which is very special. It's my daughter's birthstone, um, and when I saw Jess was doing this, I, I just had to snap it up, and it's been waiting for the perfect um, pattern, and, and this is it. So since I've seen you last, I've actually gone from, I was sort of here, 
on the leg. I hadn't really here. I was sort of here on the leg. I hadn't really done that much. So I've completed the leg and I've done the heel flap and started the heel turn. And that's just from a few 20 minute sessions with it coming up when I've spun my little spinner thingy. So that's really exciting. I'm loving it and I'm very, very keen to get this one finished. So I keep hoping it's gonna come up on the spinner more, but some other objects are instead, other crafts. There we go, so that's number two and that's from 52 Weeks of Socks, volume one. So the final pair of socks I've been working on, and this is a new cast on, you didn't see this last time, um, and I've already finished one and cast on the second, is my middle a little DK socks. It feels really weird holding this bunny by its ears and waggling it around upside down, but I don't know, I could do it like that, there we are. This is my middle of little yarns. This is the DK weight yarn. It's uh, new wool and nylon. You get two 75 gram balls in a packet. And I'm barely, I'm not gonna finish the first 75 gram ball. So then I can either have a second pair for me or I can do um, a pair for someone else, we'll see. I don't know. I think I'd need heels, toes and cuffs to do a pair for someone else. So I might have a second pair of these. Um, so yeah, I stuck, cast that off a couple of days ago. Um, no, I cast it off on, yeah, on Friday night and it's now Sunday. And I cast on the new cuff of the second sock today when we went for a dog walk. I didn't get too much done because my son's reached the age where he wants to try and climb on tree stumps and throw himself down hills and things like that. So it was a little bit, it wasn't as restful as it could have been. I should have, not restful, a walk isn't restful anyway, but I didn't have as much knitting time as I would usually get in a, um, in a dog walk situation. So let me just uh, finish <laughs> partway through a half of a round. So there we go, that's better. Now I can sort out my magic loop. So I went for these because although I have spare 2.5 mil needles and I've got a lot of four ply sock yarn, I didn't want to start another four ply pair until I got another one off the needles first. I wanted another set of needles clear first. I didn't want to have the same thing going. So I had a pair of three and a half mil needles. I don't really use a pattern. I just fudge the numbers from my vanilla pattern. So I cast on 48 stitches. Um, I tried it on and decided that'll do for the leg, which is my usual method. Um, heel flap and gusset again, just use the numbers 48 as the starting point. Knit and again, like I said last week, when it hits just above the ball of my big toe, ball of my foot, um, I start the toe decreases. So other than that, it's just my normal vanilla pattern. Really like it. It's definitely more rustic than West Yorkshire spinners, but having tried it on, it feels really good on my foot and it's cozy and it's just gonna be wonderful. So I'm really excited to have that. Plus I needed a quick win. DK socks are super duper fast. So that's all my active sock whips at the moment for summer sock camp. So I've got one foe, two hose, and some that are just kind of moseying along. But the other thing that I've done this past week, I actually did it on Friday. I set up my summer yarn basket. So this is something that I did inspired by Kay, the crazy sock lady back at, in December time. I was watching her vlogs and she was showing how she was changing up her yarn basket from um, Halloween holiday in autumn and fall season through to um, the Christmas season ready for winter knitting and I just thought it was so beautiful and so joyous and it turned your stash into a little bit of home decor and a bit of art and something you can just look at and admire and enjoy I thought I want to do that so I did that for Christmas and I actually found it helped me feel inspired and want to knit because the yarn was just there um, and I did it again for spring and to be honest my basket was pretty much empty I did so much knitting from that basket this spring so I couldn't wait to do the same thing again for summer um, now I, I didn't really go for a colour theme per se but because I'm doing sock camp and I'm basically just going to knit as many socks as I can this summer the focus was sock yarn and 80s 90s theme which is the theme that Kay has picked for her sock camp this year so um, I actually recorded some footage of 
loading my basket. So I'm going to pass over to Gemma of a couple of days ago to give you a close up tour of what is in my summer basket this year. So um, this is the state of affairs for my yarn basket as it was, whoops, as it was, as it had got to, which is quite empty. I'm so pleased. The whole yarn basket thing is really working for me. It means when I get the urge to grab something new and cast it on, it's right there and I can just reach for it. So let's start by clearing out. I think I've actually knit way more than I would usually with this yarn basket. So I would kind of like to make a lining for this basket, maybe next year. Maybe that would be my, my project for next year because it would be good to have a proper lining. I think it did come with a gingham lining. It was really cute. Right, okay, so 80s, 90s, fun. Uh, great 90s film is Cocktail. I think it's a great 90s film. It probably hasn't aged well. If I watched it again, it'd probably be really misogynistic. But for me, it's all like neon lights and brightly coloured, slightly sickly looking cocktails and, and a bit of flair and pizzazz so the cocktail range from from west yorkshire spinners definitely has to feature and with that in mind with the cocktail range i do have more somewhere i think they're probably still in the freezer from where i thought i had a moth problem that so that is oh gosh rum paradise or is it tequila sunrise that's tequila sunrise that's mojito I do have all the cocktail range. And to go along with that, I think Summer Sunset is such a beautiful, like tropical, Club Tropicana type colour. This to me screams 80s and 90s, well, late 80s, early 80s, because it's the exact colours of someone's bedroom, <laughs> uh, bathroom. Hang on, the colours really aren't picking up well. Let me change the angle. Oh, that is so much better. Okay, so this really isn't as aesthetic because you can see my son's high chair in the background, TV, remote, half eaten bar of chocolate, but whatever, this is real life. So this one is Giddy Yarn's Cherry Blossom. I put it in my spring basket because Cherry Blossom, but it does really remind me of 80s in the sense you've got those greys with pink. That's going in there. Okay, next, returning to the basket, are my two Fiberpunk skeins. I have been coveting my Fiberpunk yarn for so long and almost not daring to use it, but that is all changing now. Okay, along with that, I've got this Sherbet sock set from The Little Grey Girl. By the way, this is all gonna be socks because I'm doing summer sock camp. Um, so all my yarn in here is gonna be socks. <laughs> so that's a sock set. This one, again, reminds me of like a macaw parrot. It's a rainbow. It's very kind of Club, Club Tropicana type vibe for me. One off from The Little Grey Girl. Looking pretty riotous in terms of colour, but we are not done yet. So I did say all my yarn is going to be kind of, it's going to be socks. However, there are going to be some notable exceptions. This one is King Cole Tropical Beach. Trop Tropical Beach is DK and the name of it is Lara Beach. And this was sent to me by Maddie, who has the House of Langford channel. Um, she's overall sews. She's a very good friend of mine, very dear friend. Um, during lockdown, she actually took her tripod and her camera to the church where my little girl is and set it up so that I could actually visit with my daughter, even though I couldn't be there in real life because of the rules of lockdown. Um, so she used some of her precious outside time to do that for me. And I will never, ever forget that. And I'll never, ever be able to repay it. Um, yeah, she's just a really lovely friend. Isn't that special? Go and give her some love on her channel if you've not seen her before, especially if you like crochet. She's an absolute crochet whiz. So there's 510 metres of DK on here. I'm not sure what I'm going to make. I might make a funky fun jumper for Robin I might make a little one skein shawl for me. Um, it's acrylic and polyamide, so it could be socks. I could make socks for me and Alan and Robin out of this. In fact, that might be what I do. And then I'll try and source this yarn again and maybe do myself a jumper in it because I just think that would be awesome. <laughs> Apologies if you can hear my son in the background. Okay, so this is another full skein of Sherbet by The Little Grey Girl, because I'm doing a pair for my dad and a pair for me. My dad will require the 100 gram skein, um, and he doesn't like seams and things, but I will use the 50 
with the contrast. So me and my dad are going to have matching socks this time, which will be fun. And then I said about notable exceptions to the sock rule. And this is it. You may remember, if you're a long time viewer of the channel, that Gemma, the little grey girl, gave me some undyed DK she wasn't going to use. And I made it this rain rainbow unicorn confetti um, with the idea that I was going to knit it into something for my then unborn son. My then unborn son is two and a half, so I'm a little bit behind. And I'm just going to say this now, I've got way too much yarn in this basket. There is more than I think I could possibly ever knit up. But I also have a backup bag of yarn um, that I have on the table over there, which I can draw from as this gets used up. So here we have for the love of yarn. This was a Callum's colorway and it's respect is for everyone. And it's just beautiful. Again, it really goes with all those teals, pinks. It kind of pulls everything together. So I think my color riot chaos basket would not be complete without that. All right. And finally, this is my exception. Again, little gray girls having a hell of a moment in my basket today. This is little gray girl. Surrey mohair or mohair silk? I'll have to look at the ball band. But this is for a cow. So you actually hold these double and the result is a much more muted cow. I kind of wish I wasn't muting it and just had another one of this. And did it unmuted? Because I think that would be amazing. <laughs> it's a cowl pattern that I have bought and downloaded. I just can't remember the name of it. I made the mistake of starting it at knit night and couldn't concentrate, lost my place. I had to frog it. Um, but yeah, I just... I'm going to work on that. There are projects I really want to work on during the season, which don't actually necessarily fit in with this basket and the theme and aren't socks. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop the yarn in there for it anyway. So I've got this beautiful pinky coloured Sirdar Snuggly four ply, which is for a four ply cardigan that I plan on doing. And I did buy that for doing for one of the baby girls that's arriving. So I think that should still be in there to remind me that I need to do it. And so it's easily grabbable and I don't have to hunt for it and I can just get going. So there you are. There is my Riot of Colour Summer Yarn Basket. I'm really, really pleased with that. I think it's going to look absolutely fab and fun. And it's going to give me so much inspiration for my knitting for the summer season, which for the record is going to be June, July, August. And we are on the 14th of June today. So I'm going to do June, July, August, possibly up to the 15th of September. I think that's what it's going to be. And then September, I'm afraid you're just going to have to put up with Christmas. <laughs> so here is my crazy colour 80s, 90s basket for Summer Sock Camp 2024. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet. If you are socking along, then please do let me know in the comments below what you're making. Have you been following the hashtag, following in Ravel, or you've got any new patterns that have come up as a result of this? Who should I watch? Who else is making? Let me know all the sock chatter below. Um, that's it from me for today, and I will see you in the podcast episode later this week. Take care. Bye.